Let's go back to uh, our table one, chapter nine. Let's look at our note number two. Note number two says table one, which is the table we're referencing, applies only to complete conduit or tubing systems. It is not intended to apply to sections of conduit or tubing used to protect exposed wiring and cable from physical damage. What are we talking about there? We're talking about sleeves and chases, right? Open on the end, not connected between boxes. Showing you some pictures here. Of course, that'd be a chase or a sleeve, right? How full can we fill that conduit? If it fits, it ships, man. Throw it in there. Take your little spike, make some more room, push some more in it. It's fine. There is no requirement for conduit fill. Now, I want everybody to understand. If we start bundling a bunch of current carrying conductors together for 24 inches or longer, we've got to reduce the opacity of those conductors, right? That's two different conversations. But how full can we fill that? As full as we can physically make it. A conduit system looks like this, has fittings or boxes on both ends of it, connects to enclosures basically on both ends. Conduit runs look like this, right? Continuous from enclosure to enclosure. Complete conduit systems. Now, this table does not apply to chases, sleeves, or stubs. Complete conduit systems terminate both ends to an enclosure or a box, right? Question here. How full can this be filled? There's, there's, it's not connected between boxes. So there, there's, there's no conduit fill re requirements for something that's not a conduit system. A conduit system connects between two enclosures. How about these? Fill them as full as we want, right? I think we put a couple more in there. How about this? Common thing to do in the, in the industrial setting, right? Got some cable tray. Drop out of the cable tray, got a conduit, stub down to the lower whatever. How full can you fill that conduit? As full as you want. If it'll fit, it's within compliance with the National Electric Code. Now, the reduction of ampacity, that does not change, right? We start putting a bunch of cables together or conductors together, we got to reduce the ampacity. That doesn't change. Let's look at note number three, just so we can understand some things. Equipment grounding conductors. Equipment grounding conductors or bonding jumpers, where installed, and I'm using different words than what's written there, I understand. Where installed shall be included when calculating the conduit or tubing field. So we're going to count every wire. The actual dimensions of the equipment grounding conductor or bonding uh, conductor, insulated or bare, shall be used in the calculation. Okay, we got an insulated conductor table that tells us how big the overall size of the conductor is, including insulation. We got another table that talks about the actual overall size of bare conductors based on the circuit mills. I'll show you that in a little bit. Number four, love to ask questions on the, on the state exams about question uh, note number four. It says, where conduit or tubing nipples, highlight the word nipples, having a maximum length not to exceed 24 inches, highlight 24 inches. You know, one of the other things that we have, and it's one of those terms, the word nipple, uh, is used in a lot of cases, but as far as the National Electric Code is concerned for ampacity reduction, adjustment, all that stuff, uh, 24 inches or less is a nipple. Anything longer than 24 inches is a conduit system. And conduit systems, we're back to note number one and note number two, right? And the table. And also chapter three information, article 310 about adjustment factors, correction factors, all that if it's conduit system. Note number four gives us an out for nipples. I'll start again. It says, where conduit or tubing nipples having a maximum length not to exceed 24 inches are installed between boxes. I like between boxes. It says, cabinets and similar enclosures, the nipples shall be permitted to be filled to, I like 60%. You know, we're at 40% fill on our table, but for a nipple, we get 60% fill. And it goes on to say, 60% of their total cross section area, and 31015C1, which is the adjustment factor table, need not apply. Highlight adjustment factors need not apply. The test providers love to ask questions about this nipple thing. How full can we fill a nipple? 60%. Do we have to use adjustment factors for a nipple? So those are the pieces of information you need to know. They may ask you in a different way, what's the allowed ampacity on such and such size conductor in this piece of conduit that's 18 inches long. Nowhere in their conversation did they say the word nipple. <coughs> you know what just happened, right? They won't call a nipple, they'll say it's 18 inches long. 
and maybe there's 20 current can conductors in that raceway. What's the adjusted or the allowed impasse of that? Whatever it is on the, you get it? There is no adjustment factor for that. You got to know about the 24 inches or less. You got to know that. Now I got some pictures here to show. Those are nipples, right? Those are nipples. Those are nipples. These are not nipples. Those are conduits. But you can see that they intended on those being used as nipples, right? They don't get that 60% uh, feel, and they don't get that don't worry about the adjustment factors. Right? And this is a problem. Happens all the time. That's not nipples, right? That's not a nipple. It's conduit systems. 60%, don't worry about it. So what I want you to do is, is let's revise our table. Underneath the double line here where it says over two, down below here, I want you to write the word nipple. Over here where it says 40%, I want you to write 60%. Now we've already looked at this table before, right? The adjustment factor table. We don't have to worry about that if it's a nipple. 